George is the patron saint of England by declaration of King Edward II in 1347. He is remembered as a martyr, having given his life in witness to the gospel during the persecution of the church in the early fourth century. Very few details of his life have survived and his story is replete with legend. By the middle of the fifth century, he, he was commemorated in local calendars and historical records of the period. George was a soldier by vocation, serving as an officer in the Roman army. It is said that he gave his goods to the poor and openly confessed Christianity before the court. George's initial notoriety may well have resulted from his faithfulness and witness to, church, to the church during the Diocletian persecution, 303 to 304, a particular destructive period through which the church suffered. Much of the legend of George dates back only to the eighth century and more of it developed in the centuries that followed. The infamous story of George slaying the dragon, probably developed from Greek mythology, is not associated with him until the 12th century. The inclusion of George's story in the 13th century manuscript, The Golden Legend, accounted for his growth, growing popularity in the Middle Ages. In the 12th century, George was recognized as the patron saint of soldiers and he was called upon in support of those who would fight in the Crusades. The shield under which his soldiers fought became a symbol of national pride for the English, and in the time was adopted into the national flag. Interestingly, the St. George's shield, white shield, emblazon with a red cross is a basis of the Episcopal Church flag and seal. You're no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens of the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. Bless be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, <clears throat> all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Almighty God, you commissioned your holy martyr George to bear before the rulers of this world the banner of the cross. Strengthen us in our battles against the great serpent of sin and evil, that we too may attain the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all his people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here ends the reading. Psalm 3. Psalm 3. <clears throat> Lord, how many adversaries I have. How many there are who would write against me? How many there are who say of me, there is no help for him in his God. But you, O oh Lord, I shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord. And he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people. Who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Set me free, O oh my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Word of God, written in Revelation to John, chapter 12, beginning at the seventh verse. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and the angels fought against the dragon. 
The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades have been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Here in the reading. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Again, Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will search for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I'm going, you cannot come. Then the Jews said, is he going to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying, where I'm going, you cannot come. He said to them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. They said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Why do I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you, and much to condemn. But the one who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand what he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak these things as the Father instructs me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. Please sit. The weeks seem to be passing us by. <clears throat> and this has been a real interesting period in the life of we here in the region. We were joined with everyone else under the COVID pandemic. But now in these recent days, we have been in a place by ourselves as a region or a part of the region as we've had added to that the, the dust. And it has meant for us a time of at times self-imposed lockdown, at other times lockdown as decreed by the various authorities. We've been asked to live inside, to come away, to, as much as possible, reduce contact with each other. 
there is a sense that most of these instructions that we've had in recent times go completely against what we know as human beings living in the world. In our world, we have been encouraged to engage. Even the degree of sanitize, sanitizing that we are being asked to do is contrary to us. We have played in the dirt as children. As a matter of fact, in recent years, <clears throat> The medical authorities have been indicating that some of the illnesses that our children are experiencing is because our homes are too sterile. They're, we clean them too much. There's too much disinfectant in our homes. And our children aren't developing the natural immunities that come from running about and playing on the ground. And making mud cuckoo and also all those kind of things that kids do as they play. But yet, in this period, we have been forced to sanitize, going and coming. At every turn, we have been washing our hands, killing the good bacteria and the bad one. So it's been an interesting time, a really interesting period period that seems to separate us, separate us from each other, separate us from the things that we love to do, separate us, in a sense, from the wider world. And all this in a time when we have found ourselves moving quickly towards globalization. And this morning, we are observing the Feast of St. George, whose emblem is used for our church. And in the Gospel reading for today, Jesus speaks of being not of this world. Not of this world. He speaks, as John would have it, as coming from above which is in keeping with John's theology, while those to whom he spoke, he considers them as coming from below. They are of the world, and they will die in their sin unless they believe that he is the one. He is the one who has come down from above as Messiah. John offers this harsh distinction this day between Jesus and those of the religious authorities to whom he was speaking. And he gives us the sense that the idea of not being of the world is of tremendous importance in this journey. And it seems in a way to parallel with all that we have been experiencing over these last couple of months. It's not been an easy task. It has not been fun. And we have tried in every possible way to maintain contact with others. It is interesting that we who are here in this college, that part of the training methodology for priesthood is separation, to take persons away from family, from diocese in times, from loved ones, and bring them here. In the past, it was even more stringent. Persons came here and would have been here for the entire four years. In those days, they would not have had telephones, and 
the journey up the drive to receive a letter or to post a letter was the only means of keeping in any kind of contact. And so the methodology of preparation for ministry through the years has been one of separation. And over time, this separation has been reduced more and more and more and more until with our technology now, the separation is only, in a sense, in our minds. In reality, we are really more connected at times than we have ever been. Persons have, in the past, spoken about the way that our young people don't socialize. But I think that this is a misunderstanding because our young people are in many ways more connected than we have ever been. They reach far and wide and they're in constant contact, looking to see what the other has put up on their Facebook page or what Instagram message they have sent or what tweeted, tweeted message they have offered. Constantly viewing the life of the other to such an extent that there's even fake news in a way where persons pretend and they put up false images. But nonetheless, it is a, a time of tremendous contact and communication. This period has been one of separation as far as we are able. And it has invited us to come away. The challenge has been that we have been more concerned with the fear of contracting COVID virus. And so our separation has been one of fear as opposed to an intentional act so that we can do something with the time. Somewhat like how the church uses or introduces the season of Lent, an intentional coming away in order that we may be at one with God and seek God in a more intentional manner. So this has not been a coming away in order that we may search for God and know God. This has been a coming away because of the fear that has been in many ways encouraged in our midst. But nonetheless, nonetheless, there is still that opportunity for us to use the time and to use it well. Our time here at Codrington is coming to a close very shortly. In a few weeks, we will be hopefully out of this place and back in the thick of things to whatever extent we can be in the thick of things given all that is happening around. But it will be a time to be away. For some of you, it will be the last time that you come here as students for your time of study would have come to an end. But you go out into a world that is tremendously different from the one that you left. And the question is, how can you be of service to that world? Will it require a fitting in or the fact that you may very well be different might be advantageous at this time. Jesus says, I am from above, you are from below. Jesus' intention was to raise the people up, to bring them up to where he is. What is our intention? Is our intention to fit in 
or is our intention to raise persons up. We have had the opportunity to be in many ways protected from a lot that has been going on in recent times. We've had the opportunity to theologically reflect with our lectures over the time as we engage all that was around us. We've had the opportunity, if we have taken it, to look at all this from a different perspective. And now to be preparing to go back out into the world, to be of service to the world, to be in the world but not of the world. More and more, our church needs men and women who are prepared to be not of the world. More and more, we need persons, whether ordained or unordained, to come to this life from above and not from below. We are fond of saying we are only human. And oftentimes this offers us an escape route to not live up to the challenge. But Jesus doesn't take that route. Jesus doesn't emphasize his humanity. Jesus emphasizes his divinity. Not at the expense of his humanity, because he was there, he was there in the flesh. He could touch, he could be touched. He was hungry, he was tired, he was fatigued. He had all the signs of the human experience. But what couldn't be seen and what is difficult to see is the divine presence, at least using the five senses. So Jesus reiterates time and again his being from above. The Father has sent me. I have come down. I am of divine origin. This too is something that we have to hold to as we walk away from this place. This too persons must hold to as they bear witness to their Christian faith. That sense of being also from above. That sense of being under the authority of God. The time away for us has the intention of reorienting our focus so that it is not that we have come to this work and our perspective is that of one from below. We are reoriented in a way that invites us to engage the work of ministry whether we be ordained or unordained as coming from the Father. Not our own efforts, not our own ideas, not our own preferences, but to be able to listen to the divine guidance. As clergy and as potential clergy, you will come to realize that the sense of canonical obedience to one's bishop is really intended to keep one's orientation in that direction that causes us always to realize that our authority comes from above. So Bishop, as chief pastor, is in a sense above. Within our brethren and sisters from the Roman Catholic tradition, there is the Pope who is perceived as the vicar of Christ. Again, the notion of authority coming from above. And so the orientation is 
to be looking upward for that source of guidance, that source of direction. Not that these individuals are the end all and be all, but their presence is simply to keep us focused on this direction, but knowing that ultimately all authority, all guidance comes from God and God alone. So there is, even within our church practice, the invitation to orient ourselves in a way that is not as the world. For the world and individuals within the world or the idea of how the world works is that we seek our own well-being. We seek to promote our own selves. We seek to do the things that we want to do or feel like doing. As believers, our task is to do the will of the one who has sent us into the world. In ministry, that is our chief work. And we cannot continue to speak of Jesus we cannot continue to quote Jesus and then get up and function in a completely contrary manner to the methodology of Jesus. Hence why we in ministry are invited to submit to get into the habit of submitting our will to the divine will. This is what enables Jesus to say, I am from above. I am from above. Because Jesus has submitted his will to his Father. Your task as persons in ministry will be to invite and encourage other persons to submit to Almighty God. But there is nothing like the personal example that others may see before them. But we ourselves are submitting ourselves not to our own desires, but to the will of God. Our holy scriptures, and no doubt the scriptures of many other faith traditions, speak to this truth, that we are all called to submit to the will of God, however we refer to God, because we are not our own. We have come under the authority of the one who has created us. John uses the analogy of being from above. Jesus, the man, is from above. Jesus, the human, is of the divine. Each one of us in our humanity is of the divine. And as such, must learn how to take direction from God, God's self. Pray then that as we continue to engage our world, 
as we continue to be bombarded by life in this world, that we may constantly remember Jesus' words. I am from above. And that we can make them our own words. And day by day seek to fully grasp what it means to say I am from above. To develop that orientation towards our life and towards our world. That allows us to enrich this world. By the virtue, by virtue of the fact that we are constantly engaging God. And through that engagement, being able to bring gems of knowledge and understanding to the world. Ours is not the task to regurgitate what we have heard. As much as you might feel it necessary to do in your papers, but ours is the task to listen to God and to receive from God direction for this world at this day. May God grant us the courage to walk from above, or in other words, to walk by faith and not by sight. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. In the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of lasting. Intercession form A. Each petition will end with Father in your love, and your response will be her prayer. For the Church of God in every place, that we who have taken the Word of God to heart may have the spirit of readiness so that we can respond to God's presence and invitation. Father in your love. Hear our prayer. 
all the nations of the world, and especially for our Caribbean region, may peace and unity dwell among God's people. We pray for our leaders, that they may fulfill their duties with integrity and work on tiring to address the cruel issues of our society. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. For all institutions of learning, especially for this college, may true wisdom and godly discipline be found. May God continue to bless our principal, academic dean, all others who live and work here. May we live in unity and be mindful of each other's need. Father, in your love, hear our prayer. For all who, have, who are experiencing physical or emotional discomfort, especially the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, may God ease their burden, provide for them, sustain them with his goodness, and surround them with his presence. Father, in your love, for all medical personnel, scientists, and all others who seek to find cures for the various diseases across the world. Remember the sick, those suffering from the COVID-19 virus, that God will heal them and bring them relief. Father, in your love. Yeah, for all who have died or will die this day, may God in Christ grant them comfort and may they rest in peace. For the families of those who mourn, May God wipe away their tears and heal their pain and give them peace. Father, in your love, receive our prayer. For ourselves, that we may faithfully follow Christ each day of our lives. May God equip us with all things necessary to be his agents of love in this world. May our lives be a reflection of Christ in our actions and words. Father, in your love, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people and grant that what we ask may be granted to us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and give us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God of mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. <clears throat> the kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Served by such, set to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. <clears throat> Things come from you, O oh Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For in the saints you have given us an example of godly living, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the crown of glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known for us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. But on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied. And we will sing glad songs of praise to him. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for showing us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, O Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. <clears throat> Amen. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven, Hallelujah. He whom thou wast me to bear. Hallelujah. As he promised, hath arisen. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has been pleased to give joy to the whole world, grant, we beseech thee, that with the help of his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may attain the joys of eternal life through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.